In this lesson, we're going to look at the new ways that you can input uh, your values, colors, etc., into your definition. Um, a number of these options have been around for a little while, including the toggle that we see here. Um, but there's some additional input objects here that will allow us to have a little bit more control. So if we take a look at these two, um, one is called a button and the other is called a toggle. The toggle only switches, like a light switch, on or off. And once we switch it on, we have to then switch it back off. In contrast, the button is just that, it's a button. So once we press the button, as long as we're holding it down, it's going to say true or false or whatever um, output value you're specifying there. And then once you release, it's going to uh, turn back off. And we're going to take a look at an example that uses the button here in a second. Um, additionally, um, for a long time now, you've had the option for creating your own color swatches. Um, but the developer, David Rutten, has added a few more options in here for a little bit more functionality when it comes to how we interact with our definitions. So this is the actual color picker, which gives us the same options that you would see inside the swatch menu when you go to define what color is coming out of the swatch, but allows us to see visibly all of those inputs so we can dynamically change it as we would a slider. Additionally, within the uh, options for colors, there's a new object called the color wheel. And this one's really great. Um, if you've looked at Adobe's Cooler online, uh, it's kind of similar in terms of how it works. And it allows you to specify uh, different relationships between colors and how many you want across the color wheel and you'll get that many colors that are defined by those relationships. And we're also going to use this one um, on a specific example here in a second. Uh, next when it comes to setting up your file and laying it out, once you've gotten past um, the kind of basics, if you have a more complex file, you might find yourself trying to figure out where the next significant move in your file was after the beginning. So you can use these little objects called the jump objects to bounce between certain locations in your file. So as you click on the green one here, it will take you to the gray one there. And then lastly, uh, this um, goes along with what we were mentioning earlier about how you might have objects in Rhino that you want to coordinate the preview for um, relative to what's in going on in Grasshopper. And this one um, is called the legend. And it not only shows you um, this kind of heads up display inside of Grasshopper, but it also shows that same thing inside of the Rhino viewport. So here we can see that the color and the tag and then the uh, location, this is the rectangle input inside of the uh, modeling environment, allow us to specify a heads up um, dynamic legend that would change if anything in Grasshopper were to change. So here I've labeled something uh, as a kind of programmatic space types, flex, office, communal, and circulation, and give them, gave them some corresponding colors. So you might do the same thing and use your colors to relate to geometrical previews that you have going on in your Rhino viewport as you're working. And then lastly, we're also going to use um, uh, this little guy called the cherry picker, which allows us to track through a data tree and, sp uh, and choose a specific element from within it. It's kind of like a multi-dimensional slider for data trees. All right, so let's um, do a couple of exercises uh, using some of these new ways to input data into Grasshopper. All right, so the first thing I'd like to do is um, I want to take a look at that color wheel option. So this is under params input. And here are those uh, color input objects that we were uh, reviewing. So here's the color wheel. Right? It creates a palette of related colors. So if I take a look at this, um, uh, we have a set of grips that we can uh, drag throughout the uh, radial direction of the color wheel, um, a kind of radial spectrum uh, focused on that grip, as well as uh, some kind of uh, radial sliders for saturation and luminance. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a panel and make uh, two versions of it. And I'm going to take a look at what's coming out. And nothing comes out until I specify how many values I want in terms of the colors that uh, it's going to produce. So 
um, before I do that, I want to make sure that I've specified the relationship. Do I want it to be a monochromatic relationship, uh, trichromatic, etc., complementary, triad? Once I do that, and I say that I want, let's say, three colors, it's going to then spit out those colors here as RGB values. Now, um, to double check that uh, what the colors are doing, uh, maybe what we could do is um, in Rhino, let's go ahead and um, draw three circles and then use these colors to preview how these circles should look. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring those circles into Grasshopper by referencing them into a uh, curve parameter. And now I have them here and I can do a custom preview through the vector color custom preview option. So that I use my geometry and these colors uh, to show what's happening in the Rhino viewport relative to the color wheel. So I'll bump up my luminance and my saturation. And as I move the grips around on my color wheel or change the relationship here, it's going to allow me to um, have a live update of what I'm seeing here. And if I wanted to see that just a little bit better, I might just make a boundary surface first. There we go. Much better. All right, so that's the color wheel. And, um, you know, it's a little bit more dynamic than, let's say, um, putting in a bunch of uh, swatches or color, color picker. And that's why I like it. Um, and always the colors are related. So I can very quickly uh, produce a kind of spectrum of colors uh, without having to think much about it, but knowing that they're going to look um, right off the bat decent together. So the next thing that we want to do is um, take a look at a more kind of in-depth use of um, some of those other objects we looked at. Uh, we talked about the button and the um, the color picker, as well as the uh, cherry picker, which was found under the utilities menu here. So what I'm going to do is let's go ahead and start a new um, definition here in Grasshopper. And let's take a look at first working with a grid of elements. So I want some geometry that's organized well in Grasshopper very quickly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a grid. It's a very convenient way for me to get um, an array of objects into the uh, Rhino viewport. All right, so coming out of my grid, I've got um, a data tree composed of five branches, each of five um, cells here, um, my squares. And what I want to do is I want to take a look at how I might be able to choose one of these 25 rectangles and color it separately from the rest. So what we can do is um, first of all I want to find a way to isolate that one. And we mentioned earlier that that cherry picker object will allow us to extract a single item from a data tree. That's exactly what I want to do. So what I'm going to do is drop that in and use my uh, curve output and go into the cherry picker. Then I can go ahead and say which of the data paths do I want to extract the item from? So maybe the um, one labeled 001, as well as the index for which one of those I want to choose. Now, everything looks um, gray. If I select it, it's OK. I can see it a little bit better because it's green. But why don't we um, first go ahead and make sure that we adjust our uh, preferences so this is a little bit more visible. There we go. And then let's go ahead and do that same trick of using a boundary surface from the surfaces tab to show this one as a kind of fill compared to the rest. So as I track through this, I can choose a different item from this data tree, which is our grid. Okay, so that's great. What if I wanted to say, well, I want to have a control over whether or not that is being shown. So if I hold down the button object, which we said was under params input, 
I might be able to actually show that that one is uh, the current one I've chosen. Otherwise, I want it to just be uh, hidden and look like the rest. So I'm going to use my button, which if I put a panel in here, we can see what's coming out. It says false or true when I hold it down. That sounds good. All right. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that um, this cherry picker, the result, the item coming through here, can only go into the boundary surface if I've held this down. So I'm going to use one of my sets objects so that I can dispatch this item based on this toggle, uh, sorry, this button, which I'm toggling between true and false, but I have to hold it down so that it's, it's a button. So if I say that when this is true, it goes through, I'm going to use A, right? So now I don't see anything unless I hold the button down. So I'm adding in one more element for um, a kind of user interface. And again, I can move this around and choose to preview it whenever I specified the corresponding item. Okay, and then um, one more step. Let's go ahead and give this a custom color so that we can see it a little bit better. I'm going to go ahead and use that uh, color picker option. All right. Maybe a nice uh, cyan color would look good here. All right, and I'm going to use that same custom preview option to preview this geometry with this color. There we go. So now I can track through my different options and preview the one I've selected. Now, if I wanted to invert that relationship, I could just use the B output of my dispatch. So I turn it off whenever I'm holding it down. So now I can actually see live what's going on with the cherry picker if I move the inputs around. All right, so that's our second exercise for the different ways that you can input. And the majority of these that we've highlighted are really objects that allow us to more dynamically interface with the definitions. The color picker, the cherry picker, the color wheel, etc. And those are some of the big improvements or additions recently um, to the ways that you can input uh, data into your grasshopper definitions.